We're barely a year into 2022 and already there's been a supply chain attack against WordPress. You know, I honestly thought that it would take a little bit longer for the world's most popular website builder to have some kind of major security problem, but no, several WordPress add-ons and themes from a legit vendor, Access Press, in this case, were backdoored. And so the downstream effect of this was that everybody who is using these add-ons and themes from this vendor on their WordPress site effectively had their websites backdoored as well. And Access Press is a pretty popular WordPress theme and add-on company. They've got over 360,000 active websites that are using their products and about half of their themes and plugins were actually hacked. So it says right here on the website that they've got 64 WordPress themes, about 40 of these were hacked. And they've got 109 WordPress plugins, about 53 of those were hacked. So a large portion of this user base, they probably have a compromised website right now. So if you're running a site using add-ons or themes from Access Press, from any of them from this company, go ahead and update your site and take any further measures for recovery, which most likely is going to mean redeploying your site from a secure backup. Hopefully you have some fairly recent ones. So here is a list of the affected themes and the plugins and their various version numbers. So the detail of this hack really, uh, most of the details of this are written up on Jetpack and that's also going to be linked in the description of this video as well. Now this vulnerability allowed for remote code execution. So it's about as serious of a breach as it can be if you were using one of these hack themes. I don't know if it actually has a CVE number attached to it already, but it's probably going to be in the eight plus range. Now, luckily it appears that only access press themes and plugins that were downloaded directly from their website were the ones that were infected because their website was breached back in September of 2021. So that's how hackers were able to inject these back doors into these different plugins and themes. If you were downloading them from wordpress.org, then you should be fine. In fact, if there's not an updated version of your Access Press plugin that you downloaded from the website, then you should just switch to the wordpress.org version. That's another way that you can at least close the back door after you've removed any other malware that may have been loaded onto your system, of course. And this here is the code that gives the hackers their remote shell. This is the malicious function written in PHP. And as you can see, there really isn't that much to it. There typically isn't a whole lot of syntax necessary to create remote shells in pretty much any programming language. That's why they can be so easy to actually hide in source code. And obviously, since they give the hacker a remote shell, full access to the system of all of the malicious code that they could include inside of something, a remote shell is gonna be their go-to. And this particular remote shell also removes the dropper source code after it's able to execute successfully, making it even more difficult to detect. So since this is the first major hack affecting WordPress of this year, at least the first major hack that I'm aware of, I think it's time to once again address the WordPress question. Is this something that you should even be using in 2022? WordPress was created back in 2003, so it is a pretty old framework. It's also written in PHP, which is a pretty old programming language, and it wasn't initially created with a whole lot of safety in mind. And that's part of the reason why PHP code itself is often written insecurely. It's also largely due to the fact that it's a it has a very low barrier of entry. Like PHP is generally considered much easier to learn as far as programming languages go, especially compared to something like C++. It also doesn't really force any extra security on you. So you can have a lot of people who don't know a lot about security or programming picking up a language that just doesn't force you to write safe code. 
Now, the WordPress framework itself kind of takes us up to 11 with the fact that it's one of the easiest frameworks to actually build a website with. And as you can see right here, they proudly claim on their site that 43% of the web is built on WordPress. And that's part, part of the reason for that is just how easy it is to deploy a site with WordPress. You don't need to know how to write JavaScript or really know anything about HTML or CSS to get started with it. And a big reason for that is the availability of the themes and the plugins. Almost any theme or style that you could think of for a WordPress site is already available for download, sometimes for free and sometimes for a fee. And the same deal goes with the plugins, which can make your site do almost anything that you would want it to do. But again, so many of the developers that are creating these themes and plugins don't really have a background in cybersecurity or computer science. A lot of them probably just found an old PHP book on their uncle's shelf, asked to borrow it, and then taught themselves how to create plugins for WordPress. And since that's the most common uh, website framework that's being used, there's some money that can be made in it. But again, a lot of these are not secure to begin with. And of course, many of the people that are downloading and installing these themes on their WordPress site, they don't know any better themselves. So we have this situation where it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Hackers know that about WordPress sites, which is why so many of them target these sites in the first place. They are numerous, they're not well maintained, and they're easy to hack. No wonder black hats love WordPress sites. So I think that the best advice is really to try to avoid WordPress. It's not really a problem if you know what you're doing. Obviously, I'm not talking to those people. And WordPress is actually pretty good for things like blogs and news sites. In fact, that's what most of the most popular WordPress sites are. They're typically a blog or a news site that some big company runs and they have a separate site maybe for their store or for whatever web properties they have. So that blog or news site just typically doesn't end up being a really good target for hackers. I mean, maybe they could get some credit cards or customer info if you're running a paid blog and you store that kind of stuff on the same server. But most blogs and news sites are free and they don't require logins to consume their content. So they have the benefit of being a low value target to hackers, which means most of them just won't bother. But if you're trying to build something like a bank or a crypto exchange or an e-commerce site or anything that has to deal with money and people's personal info, WordPress probably isn't the best idea. Look into another framework. But that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and comment to hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your day.